Welcome, everyone. We will begin the webinar on automotive lifts and shop equipment by Midco. I'm Melissa Joles with RDA Impact, and we have Ron Healy and Doug Marshall. They will be your presenters today on behalf of Midco. The presentation will take approximately 45 minutes. We are recording it and will post it on our YouTube channel. If you have questions during the webinar, you can type them in the chat box at the bottom right of your screen, and they will answer them throughout the presentation. Now, I'll turn it over to Ron and Doug. Thank you, Melissa. Um, this is Ron Healy, and I've got Doug Marshall with me. We are the factory reps for the AD, ADT equipment uh, through Medco. And what we're going to do is go through the different segments of equipment that we offer and uh, talk about features uh, that you need to talk to your customers about when selling the product and that you should really primarily know for yourself as well. We won't get into too much detail. We don't want to have you all intimidated or anything like that if you're not familiar with the product. Uh, but we will touch on all the good subjects that you all need to know uh, to be successful in selling this. So uh, right now we're looking at the main page of the, the presentation showing a, a variety of our equipment that we offer. And uh, what we're going to go into is, you know, what, what is shop equipment? Uh, we offer automotive lifts such as two post lifts, four post lifts, alignment lifts, scissor lifts, which are also pad lifts, heavy duty and specialty lifts. We also offer wheel service equipment, such as wheel balancers, tire changers, and alignment machines. And we also have a, a line of body shop equipment, uh, such as paint booths, frame machines. We have a tilt deck style and a scissor style. We offer car rotisseries, body carts, and mid-rise lifts that are used in the auto body industry. So you can categorize the automotive repair industry uh, in these typical subjects here, which would be general repair shops, tire shops, body shops, quick oil change, and transmission shops. You know, for general repair shops, it, it pretty much they, they like to cover the whole gamut. They do most repairs and service on all vehicles. Uh, they might be doing a little bit of wheel work uh, just to be able to keep it all in one shop. And you'll also see some shops now are doing mechanics and wheel alignments uh, because they want to generate more revenue for their shop. Um, when you get into tire shops, you know, tire shop is strictly that. It, it, they, they do tire changing. They do uh, wheel balancing. And uh, most tire shops don't offer alignment services, uh, mainly because you have to have someone that just specializes it, uh, specializes in it. And they really want to just have guys just blowing and going and doing wheels and changing tires. Uh, so it's not really worth it to them uh, to have that. The paint and body shops, again, they stick mainly to doing paint and body as their core. Uh, occasionally, a paint and body shop will offer alignment and wheel service as it complements the body shop, but that equipment is generally used to, to reduce costs for sending those services to an outside shop. So with the body shops, uh, we've got our paint booths and frame racks uh, and also other equipment that's used in the shops. You have your oil chain shops, uh, which are strictly that, like a Valvoline or a Jiffy Loop of that nature. They do a little bit of maintenance, they tire rotation, brakes, filters. Uh, sometimes they'll do heavy repairs, but usually, again, you know, you're getting away from those chain type oil chain shops uh, because they would have to have uh, an ASC certified technician in there working. The transmission shops, again, are primarily just that. Uh, Along some of them do do general repairs. So that's really our, our basis uh, for all the customers that we're selling to right now, and uh, it's been going very well. So when they buy the equipment, you know, they, they could be expanding their business and maybe building on or, or, or getting a new building where they're going to need additional equipment. Uh, they could be having one uh, having built for them that they, they need to put new equipment into, or they could be replacing worn or outdated equipment. Uh, that happens quite often. Uh, they might be adding more equipment to, to handle more volume and improve their workflow. And uh, again, also to increase their revenue if, they're, if they put in an alignment uh, or any type of body shop or wheel service. This just adds more services and they don't have to job it out uh, to the other businesses. They can keep it all in-house. 
So mainly the general repair shops will buy the, the two and four post lifts. A rolling jack is a scissor lift that's used on the four post lifts. They'll buy the shop equipment such as the jack stands, transmission jacks, oil drains, and also buy our, our alignment machine and alignment lifts. Uh, the tire shops mainly are buying the tire changers, wheel balancers, the low rise lift, that's a scissor style lift, uh, the two post lifts, alignment lifts, and alignment machines. Body shops are buying this type of equipment from us, uh, such as frame racks, paint spray boots, two post lifts, alignment lifts, alignment machines, uh, and the mid-rise lifts, which again are also uh, a scissor lift is what that is. Oil chain shops buy the pit lifts, the low-rise scissor lifts, and uh, also four post lifts for doing oil changes. The transmission shops buy our two post lifts, four post lifts, and the transmission jacks. Some of these do cross-reference from shop to shop, and that's a good thing, because uh, that way you can offer more to, to each field. Now we're going to talk about two post lifts. There's different styles uh, that you're probably familiar with uh, when it comes to asymmetric and symmetric. If you're not familiar with what that means, that's basically how the car is positioned on the four arms of the two post in relation to the center line of the two posts. So asymmetric means the car is being picked up off center from the center line in between the two posts. So generally it's maybe 40, 60. So most of the rear of the vehicle uh, is behind those posts. And this allows the, the technician to open the doors without hitting the, the columns. The symmetric style is just that. It's perfectly balanced 50-50 between those two posts. And most more than not, uh, that's used for doing trucks or long wheelbase vehicles. And what you always want to keep in mind is whenever you're lifting a vehicle on a two post, the front wheels and rear wheels have to leave the ground at the same time. So it takes a matter of getting that evenly distributed weight on the four, po uh, four arms of the lift. Now, bisymmetric is one of our terms that we came up with, and it does both. Um, to do that, what they've done is they've made the front arms triple telescoping and the rear arms longer than the front arms. So you're able to pick up symmetrically and asymmetrically, and it makes the lift more versatile uh, for doing cars and trucks. Single point and, and dual point lock release or double lock release is how you unlock the carriage locks when you want to lower the vehicle down. If you're familiar with a two post lift, when you're pushing the up button, you'll hear each post locking into place as the vehicle rises. Now to bring it down, you either have a single point lock release, which is a lever on the side of the column, that's normally right next to where the power unit is or the motor, or the dual point lock release, if you've seen these, there's a cable on the bottom of each carriage. Now the carriage, if you look at the picture there, are the yellow pieces that are go up and down inside the blue post. They're gray on the bottom one, of course, but that, those are called carriages that hold the arms. So on the dual point lock release, each carriage will have a pull cable that will release those locks so you can lower the lift down to the ground. Uh, there's the direct drive style uh, of, of two post lifts. And what that is, is the cylinder is either a push style or a pull style, meaning uh, there are no chains. Uh, the rod of the cylinder on the pull style is connected to the bottom of the carriage and then the cylinder is fixed to the top of the post and it pulls the, the vehicle up in the air. The push style is the opposite, of, obviously. The, the rod of the cylinder is attached to the bottom of the post and there's a ring on it that pushes underneath that carriage and raises the vehicle up in the air. Uh, chain over style is the old fashioned style. It's been around for many years. It's got the leaf chain that's on a roller that passes over the top of the cylinder. Uh, that's the original style that, uh, that the lift manufacturers came out with years ago. Uh, it gives you a two to one lifting ratio. So if you have a three foot cylinder, you can lift the vehicle up six feet in the air. Are there any questions regarding uh, the two post lifts? Uh, we don't have any questions yet. Okay. So moving on, 
I'm going to hand it over to Doug. Talk a little bit more about two post lifts. So in, in general terms today, probably 70 to 75 percent of the lifts sold are 10,000 pound capacity or lower. I would say at, at this point in the game, 10,000 pound capacity is probably the predominant lift. Um, these lifts we sell to, for our market, we typically are selling to, to independent shop owners and general repair shops. We don't have a, have a very large footprint in terms of car dealerships. Um, and then also some light truck repair shops. And today there's there's a, a lot of business that can be had from shops that, that outfit trucks with suspension components and things of that nature to make them four-wheel drive, four drive compatible or for mudding and so forth. The, the, lifts, the lifts that we probably sell the most of are going to be the $1,800 to $1,900 range in lower priced lifts. These lifts are all pretty common in terms of competition. Uh, price is the, is the driver, the delivered price is the driver. And then availability, availability and the customer's comfort level with the seller are pretty important. What we find um, for us is, is we're very price competitive. And then in addition to that, we have several warehouses around the country that have lifts available for immediate shipment. So that's a big plus in addition to the competitiveness. When you get over the $2,000 to $2,200 range of lifts, uh, you'll, you'll see some of the well-recognized brands like Rotary, Forward, Challenger. Those lifts um, typically do have selling features that, that allow you to differentiate differentiate the products from one another. There's usually not a, not a lot of points to, to address with a customer, but there are different points. Um, and we have a couple of lifts that are third-party certified that you can sell against that competition, and they're very competitively priced and still available. When you get over over the 10,000 pound capacity, you typically are looking at 12 and 15,000 pound capacity lifts. Those lifts are a much lower volume product. Uh, the price point is much higher. And when you're selling to the end user, typically they're not, not as price competitive for a couple of reasons. One, you're oftentimes selling to someone other than the shop owner, so it's 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 not a revenue versus cost situation. It's the we have a need that we have to take care of, such as a municipality or government agency or something of that nature. Um, and then there are some lifts today that are in the eleven thousand eleven thousand pound capacity. Those are not common, but you do see that as a as a way to to sell more for the same price when you look at, at selling a, a ten thousand pound capacity versus. Ron's in charge of this, this, this switcher. Um, so the, the list features, Ron touched on the, on the list features a little bit. Um, I'll go over that pretty quickly as well. Single point lock release versus dual point lock release. There's a couple of things. Obviously, time savings is an issue if you have a single point lock release versus dual point lock release. One of the benefits of the dual point lock release is the technician has to go from one side of the lift to the other, so it's a little a little more engaging in terms of using the product. So you might say that it can be safer and, and that the, the technician has to pay attention to what's happening around him. The rubber door guards, most all of our products have those today in the two-post arena, and those are, are pretty simple. They just stop the, the door when you open the door to, to exit or enter the vehicle after it's been placed between the posts. They protect the door from, from dinging if the door comes into contact with the, with the post. Adjustability, we have several products that are adjustable in terms of height and or width. That's a nice feature. Um, typically in a general shop environment, you'll install the lift as, as wide and as high as you can go, but there are instances where space is an issue and the ability to, to adjust the lift down or narrow makes a lot of sense. It might allow you to get another, another uh, lift in a, in a particular shop which will address which will directly impact your revenue the arm configuration is as ron explained to you we have asymmetric symmetric and bisymmetric today probably asymmetric and bisymmetric are the most common by far the bisymmetric is going to be the most flexible flexible in terms of use and that you can pretty comfortably lift anything from a from a compact car to a to a uh, one-ton long long bed crew cab dually, if you have the capacity to lift it, so that's re really the way to go. If you're talking about strictly passenger cars, probably an asymmetric. 
talking about strictly trucks or, or longer wheelbase vehicles is metric. And the way I would typically address that with an end user when I was selling lifts is, is pick the lift that, 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 that best meets 80% of your needs. You have to deal with them. Um, the rise height of the lift is, is not as critical. Uh, today, most lifts are going to raise a vehicle about six feet off the ground, and that's going to be from the pad or the pad contacts the vehicle to the floor. In most instances, for a, for a technician that's six foot three or under, that's adequate. And then we don't show it on here, but you have, have what are called truck adapters or height adapters. Oftentimes, those can be used to raise the height of the vehicle off the ground if you have the space between the pad and the lifting point before you lift. So you can gain a little bit of lift height there. And pad height is important. Most lifts today that are 10,000 pound capacity and less should be around a four inch pad height and that should allow you to lift most passenger cars without issue. When you get over that four to four and a half inch pad height, there are smaller passenger cars and sports cars that are difficult to lift with that high a pad height. Then when you get to the higher capacity lifts, the uh, 12 and 15,000 pound capacity, sometimes they have about a six inch pad height and that makes it difficult to lift passenger cars. Although a number of companies, including including us, have developed and designed 12,000 pound two post lifts that have a lower pad height to make it a little more flexible in, in terms of lifting passenger cars. And, and probably the most important thing in, in this particular slide is the Automotive Lift Institute certification. In the United States, we, we don't have a governmental agency that, that addresses lift safety in terms of rules and regulations. So the industry is relatively self-regulated. The industry itself has developed a set of standards in conjunction with the American National Standards Institute, which is ANSI, and then ETL, which is a third-party testing laboratory or a nationally recognized testing laboratory, to develop a set of standards to allow a lift to be tested with observation from ALI, which is the Automotive Lift Institute, and the third-party testing agency to verify that that lift is, is properly rated and it has all of the recommended industry safety features built into the design. So we at, at, at Medco and ATD, we have both products. Um, obviously, the ALI certified lifts are going to be a higher price point. And that's something that probably will be required by car dealerships and larger independent shops. Get to the smaller shops, the, the Automotive Institute certification is probably not such an issue. We can answer more specific questions about that if you have them either later or, or you can even call in. And I would, I would look at the pictures at the bottom right. Those, that kind of uh, shows you what, it, what the difference is. Lifting. There we go. Sorry. So now we're into our four post lifts. And there's different types. Uh, we've got them for general service, alignment. They are made or operated either cable driven or chain driven. And then we also offer service storage lifts. The blue ones that you see there, the one on the top left, that's your standard service lift. To the right, the black lift is a storage lift, which is basically or mainly used uh, by the uh, individual uh, at their home or the hobbyist or restoration type person. And then the bottom you see are alignment lift that we offer there. So we're gonna get into each of those. So there's different types of commercial four post lifts, uh, as I was saying, general service lifts, alignment, and then open front alignment. We also offer them in a chain style and a cable style. Uh, cable style is the most commonly sold today. All of the, the big guys out there are making theirs with that uh, system. But the chain style lifts have been used in the industry for many, many years. Um, us being here in Texas, uh, in the lift industry, uh, where most of the lifts used to be made, uh, we call that a Texas style lift. And the chain style is the one with the overhead cylinder. Um, and the cable, the cylinder is underneath the runway track, so it's up out of the way. And that's, that was the big improvement of those. Lifts are used in transmission shops, general repair shops, muffler shops, and alignment shops. 
they are uh, a lower volume uh, because most shops go with a two-post lift. It doesn't take as much real estate in their garage bays, and they're less expensive than a four-post. So you, you would never sell as many four-posts as you do two-post lifts. But, uh, you know, price is a consideration, and uh, that will make up a customer's mind since ours are economically priced. When you sell them the lifts, uh, there's several product-related features. We offer on our, one of our four-post lifts is a manual lock release, and that's a, a linkage system that is a single point lock release per se, where you turn down a main lever by, right by the power unit and it locks, unlocks all four corners of the lift. A lot of our other four post lifts also have air cylinders. Uh, so there's a pneumatic lock release system on most of our four post lifts. Uh, also, there's a slack cable or slack chain mechanism uh, that is on there that in case there's any type of cable or chain failure, the lock, the, the auto lift automatically locks into place. So it's a great safety feature. The runway height uh, is something to be considered. You want to always know the lowered height of the car when it's driving up onto the lift so you're not bottoming out. Uh, the wheelbase and the width is something that you always want to consider when you're looking, uh, when you're selling these lifts. Uh, you always want to ask a customer mainly what type of vehicle are you lifting. You, know, you want to get the right application uh, for their use uh, with these four post lifts. When you're selling an alignment lift, you also want to know that, uh, about the wheelbase and also if they're going to be doing two wheel or four wheel wheelbase uh, alignments. You want to confirm that the lift meets these requirements uh, that the customer is looking for. And then also you can, if you do sell an alignment lift, we've got an alignment machine that's a great upsell item uh, if they don't have one. The hobby style or storage lifts, like I said, are mainly used uh, in a residential garage by a hobbyist or a, a car restorer or someone a car, that's a car collector. Um, they can be used for light service and maintenance. They are very competitive from a pricing perspective, and uh, a lot of these lifts are very similar from one manufacturer to another. Uh, ours include drip trays. You get three drip trays with it. They include casters because the lift does not have to be bolted to the, the cement. And they also include a steel jack tray that slides in between the tracks. These are all standard features that we offer with ours. We offer this in an 8,000 pound capacity, an 8,000 pound, uh, what we call an XLT, which is longer and taller. If you're gonna be putting a taller vehicle underneath it. And we also have a 9,000 pound capacity storage lift. These lifts, come standard with a 110 volt power unit, whereas our commercial two post and four post lifts come with a 220 volt power unit. Yeah. With regards to the hobby style lifts, it's interesting to note the, the 9,000 pound lift is kind of a hybrid between a commercial, commercial lift and a hobby style lift in terms of size. And for those of you that call on import shops, that's a, a, a a pretty nice lift to sell to them as a general service rack simply because of the size because the, the larger commercial four post lifts take up a lot of space so for the for the the uh, import guy or the small car guy that's that's an applicable sell on a commercial arena too now we're going to move on to our heavy duty lifts or mobile column lifts uh, also known as wheel engaging mobile units uh, we offer two different styles. One is a 13,000 pound capacity when that's per column. And we also offer an 18,000 pound capacity. These are what we call a long sales cycle product. Uh, they are very competitively priced, but they is, it is what we call a big ticket item. So normally if you're, you've got a prospect that's interested in these, there is going to take a little bit for you to sell them uh, mainly if, because if there's financing, uh, it is a capital purchase for them, uh, or you're bidding to a county or municipality. Uh, we sell a lot of these to the fleet center type uh, truck repair shops. Um, the 13,000 pound capacity and the 18, like I said, that, that's, that capacity is per column. So for the smaller unit, you've got a total of 52,000 pounds of lifting capacity. 
in the larger unit, 72,000 pound lifting capacity. Uh, very heavy duty. You can do a wide range of vehicles with these from buses uh, to fire trucks, dump trucks, tractor trailer trucks. Uh, very, very versatile. If you'll notice in the pictures, ours are connected via a cable. They are, they are, or there are wireless versions out there. Uh, we do not offer it though. There is a patent on the wireless technology and the company that owns that patent has only sold uh, just a few of their licenses and then now actually stopped selling their licenses for their patent. Uh, so if you ever got a prospect for a mobile column lift, a lot of them will, and from my experience, will ask you, does it come wireless? And what I like to tell them is uh, no, and, and I tell them about the patent, but I also tell them that, you know, and this is true, it's not just a selling tactic, but the wireless systems do sometimes tend to lose signal, uh, and we feel that the cable-connected units are, are hardwired, per se, so I think it's just a better system to have them wired up. These are battery operated. Uh, each column takes two 12 volt deep cycle marine batteries. And uh, we also offer uh, an ALI certification on our 18,000 pound unit. So this is, a, this is a great sale. I can always assist any of you salesmen out there if you're not familiar with the product and you're talking to a customer. Uh, but we can always, uh, we always have these in stock and you can use them from passenger cars all the way up to tractor trailer trucks. So it's, it's a great item. They're on a pallet jack. You can move them out of the way when they're not being used so they don't take as much space as a four, uh, a four post lift does. And uh, it's just a great seller. And this is what we call our specialty lifts. Uh, these are ones I had mentioned previously. Uh, the low-rise and the mid-rise scissor lifts, and we also have the pit lift listed there. These are used for in a lot of tire shops for rotations and changing wheels. Uh, the PL6K, of course, is used in a uh, blue pit. It does straddle the pit. And then on the MR6K48, you see there, uh, we use those in a lot of body shops uh, because you can lift a car up to a working height and you have... Uh, the fenders and, and doors right in front of the technician. So it's a very popular item. Uh, it's also portable. Uh, you, you can move that around the shop as well and it's got adjustable arms so it does use, a, it can pick up a uh, good variety of vehicles. Uh, they are all 6,000 pound capacity. So, Almost to summarize on all, just about all of our lifts, these are some really good questions that need to be asked to make sure that you're putting the right product uh, in with the customer's application. What's the desired weight capacity of the lift? Or I always ask the customer, what is the heaviest vehicle you're gonna pick up? Um, what type of vehicles? Are they just cars? Will they be trucks or one tons or dualies? Another very important question is the shop ceiling height. Typically, the 9,000 pound and 10,000 pound lifts are 12 foot tall. If they don't have a 12 foot high ceiling, then they would have to go with what we call the floor plate or a base plate two post lift. And that has the open top and the plate on the floor. They're, 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 that way, it makes the columns shorter when they, so they don't have the overhead transom. Uh, they are 220 volt, and uh, for 10,000 pound lifts and under, they want to have a minimum of four and a quarter thick with uh, concrete with a 3,000 PSI strength. If the customer is not sure of the thickness of the concrete or it's an older shop, most more than likely the PSI strength is going to be there, but you, they can drill a small hole in it and take maybe a piece of welding wire or coat hanger and measure the thickness that way. Um, so when you are quoting these lifts, these are very, very important questions to ask the customer when you're first uh, meeting up with them about it. See, see if they have any questions for any of the lifts. Any questions on the two post, four post lifts? I don't see any. You guys are very thorough. Okay, thanks. And this is, uh, now we're into our wheel service. 
So the wheel service, wheel service terminology, I'll go through this real quickly and explain to you what the terms are. Um, today it's important to note the two tire changers at the top are what you commonly see. That's a rim clamp machine, so it grabs the wheel from one out or the other. Uh, the bead breaker, that breaks the tire from the rim. A rim clamp describes how the, how the tire changer grabs the wheel. A bead blaster is a set of jets that's, that's built either built into the table or built into the clamps to allow you to see the bead so you can air the tire up. An auxiliary air tank is an additional tank that's somehow uh, configured into the design of the tire changer. So if your air compressor can't keep up, you can dump air from that auxiliary tank to seat the bead on the, on the wheel or on the tire. And then the assist arm is pointed out, it's, that show, that's a left side assist arm. We have machines that have left side assist arm and then both right and left side assist arm, I believe. Um, from a wheel balancer perspective, Hood start means that you're going to start the machine by, by just pulling the hood down. And the machines that we sell today allow you to set the machine so it's either button start slash manual start or hood start. So manual start would be pushing a button to start. Um, you have auto entry machines and manual entry machines. Auto entry means that you get the wheel, the wheel dimension information automatically. So when you balance a wheel, you have to give the machine the distance from the machine to the wheel, the wheel diameter, and the wheel width. Most machines that are auto entry give the distance and the diameter. There are some high-end machines that also provide the wheel width. Those typically have some kind of laser integrated into the machine. Manual entry is, is what we currently carry. So you would manually enter through button pushes the distance, the diameter, and the wheel width. Accuracy. Uh, today, unless you're doing something special, most, most wheel balancers are going to be plus or minus a quarter, an ounce, a quarter of an ounce in terms of accuracy. And then spin cycle tells you how long it's going to take for you to, to spin the wheel up and balance it. Typically, spin cycles run somewhere between five and eight seconds. Um, today, as I said, most common machines are the rim clamp machines. The beauty of that kind of a machine is it allows you to clamp the rim from the outside of the bead or from the inside. Uh, it's important to note that when you clamp from the inside, there's not a very good industry solution to not bar the rim. So if you're doing expensive rims, most of the time you're going to clamp from the outside for two reasons. One, because you have good industry solution for, for protection, so you have plastic protectors that protect the wheel. And a lot of high-end wheels today require reverse mounting where you're going to flip the wheel face down when you clamp it, because of the design of the wheel, the tire has to be taken off from the back. That's easily done with the rim clamp machine. There are some machines today that are that are a combination center post, center post style machine, kind of on a rim rim clamp chassis. Those are usually higher end machines. They start in the eight to nine thousand dollar range. We don't have that at the moment. Um, when you use a rim clamp machine, really the only thing that should come into contact with the wheel is the is the clamping mechanism, however you've clamped it, whether it's inside or outside. When you when you lift the tire onto the duck head, the duck head, for those of you that don't know, is the is the, the mechanism that's fixed to the end of the bar that actually takes the tire off the wheel and puts it on. You shouldn't come into the con into contact with the with the wheel there. And while you're putting the tire on and taking it off, that duck head should be about between a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch away from the wheel. Um, if, if you do get flex in the machine, which sometimes happens when you're doing a low-profile tire, we and most others have plastic protectors that cover the metal part of the duck head. So if it does come into contact with the rim, it doesn't take it off. All of our machines that we sell, with the exception of the TC430, are have some kind of a bead blaster built into them. Our machines all have the bead blaster built into the clamp. And that seems to work quite well. It's, it's typically more effective when you're clamping from the inside, but it's adequate whether clamping from the inside or outside. Um, probably the most the most important thing to address when you're when you're selling one of these machines is your clamping range. It's important to note that the clamping range oftentimes does not relate to the, to the wheel size. So if I have a 16 inch wheel and I clamp it from the outside, Typically, that dimension is somewhere between three quarters of an inch and an inch and a half greater than the, than the wheel size. 
So that's important that you that you define that when you're talking to a customer. When you clamp from the inside, it's usually pretty close to the wheel side. Clamping range is usually pretty close to the wheel side. Um, we look at our machines in terms of, of shop volume and feature. So we have machines that don't have a bead blaster that you would probably be inclined to sell to a hobbyist. The next machine up from that is going to be a little bit smaller machine that has a bead blaster integrated into it. And that machine is good for a example would be like for it's a low volume shop. They're not going to probably have specialty wheels. They do, they'll send them out. Um, and then we have higher end machines that are that are that have assist arms and they have a little bit larger clamping range that you would sell to a high volume tire shop. The other thing to address is whether or not that customer is going to do low profile or run flat tires. And if they are, it's strongly recommended that they get an assist arm. Most tire shops will have a preference whether they use a tire or not. The storm depending on the technician's preference or the shop owner's preference. The, the wheel balancers that we sell, as I said, they're all manual entry at this point. All of them but one have hood. And the, the, the machines that have hood, obviously, they're a good start if you want them to be. The machines are all low speed technology, which means that the wheel balancer is going to spin somewhere between 120 and 200 RPM. What that means in terms of safety is it's not absolutely necessary from a pusher perspective to have a hood on the machine. The primary purpose for the hood is to stop debris from sliding into the shop. If you get a, a tire that's muddy, you have to change it or it's wet. But it's typically not a safety concern. The, and, the, and they're accurate. They, they're accurate, accurate enough at this point for, for uh, normal highway use. Most of the machines today, as I said earlier, are going to be accurate to the to, to the quarter ounce or plus or minus a quarter of an ounce, which is adequate for for almost all highway driving. The alternative weight placement modes that varies from machine to machine. What that typically means is how you're going to how you're going to put your weights on the on the wheel. So a typical wheel that gets standard weight placement is you'll have hammer on weights on the inside and outside bead of the wheel. When you alter that, you can use stick on weights on the inside of the wheel for both the inside and outside dimension, so the weights are not visible from the outside. So it's typically aesthetic versus versus functional. It's important to note that most of the time when you use alternative weight placement where you're hiding the weights for an aesthetic purpose that your balance is not going to be as accurate. And then all of the machines also allow what's called static balancing, where the machine looks at the wheel as a single plane and you can place the weight anywhere across the width of the wheel. So if you have a person that has a steel wheel and they don't want the weights visible, you could just hammer it on the wheel. In particular instance. Um, the balancers, like I said, they, they come in different ways. Where you can, most all machines today will have static and dynamic balancing. Dynamic balancing is you're going to put weights on the inside and outside in some form or fashion. Static balancing is you're going to put weights, a single weight, somewhere across the width of the wheel. Most, most um, machines that come today will have hood stars. That's pretty typical, unless it's a very low-priced piece of equipment. And most all of them have some kind of replacement integrated into the design. Uh, we also, we didn't show it, but we also have the heavy duty doing, say, 19.5 and 22.5 inch uh, semi type wheels with the adapters that will allow you to do that. Um, when, you, when you look at a wheel balancer, the way we sell them today, as the machine comes to you or your customer, you'll probably be able to balance 75 to 80 percent of what drives down the road in terms of light, light truck and passenger cars. It's important to note that there are a lot of accessories that are available for wheel balancers in terms of truck kits for dually wheels. Some wheels are lug centric, which means you have to mount them on the balancer through, through a lug system versus a cone. Some wheels require a collet versus a cone. Toyota in particular is very difficult to balance their truck wheels if you don't have collets, and collets are machines to, to specifically inside the center hole of the wheels until you get a more accurate balance. 
probably the last thing I'll leave you with for balancers is, is the mounting is the most critical part of, of balancing. If you don't mount the wheel properly on the machine, you will not get an accurate. And then I'll go over the questions again. From a from a, a balancer and a tire changer perspective, tire changer in particular, defining the wheel size and what that means in terms of clamping range and defining that for the customer so they understand that the clamping range for a given wheel size is not the same as the diameter, especially if you're clamping from the outside. From a balancer perspective, it's pretty straightforward. If the machine will do it for you, 24 inch wheel, that's each wheel. You also have to take into consideration with both a wheel balancer and a tire changer the, the limits or the specs with regards to the tire size. So on a typical tire changer, you probably can do somewhere between a 35 inch and a 49 inch tire, but maybe only a 26 inch wheel. On the balancer, you have the same thing. You might be able to do a 24 inch balance up to a 24 inch wheel, but only a 36 or 38 or 39 inch tire. So that's, that's important to define especially if the customer is going to be doing, doing some kind of truck wheels, truck tires. Um, balancers, balancers can be sold in most any shop. It's interesting in a general repair shop, but if a guy doesn't have a balancer and a tire changer, giving them the ability to add that service, especially if, if they're doing oil changes where it's not a quick oil change facility, they can add some additional revenue by adding a balancer. Or the, or the tire changer or both. Selling tires is a different story. It probably doesn't make sense to do that. It's also, also a good idea for a quick oil change places to balance and rotate tires. That's another additional revenue. And then as Ron mentioned, from a body shop perspective, a lot of those places will send out alignments, balances, and tire changers, and, and they realize revenue or save a little bit of cost by doing that too. Um, the low profile tire tire question, you address that with an assist arm. Typically, a low profile tire latch, you'll, you'll need a, some kind of an assist arm to address those wheels and tires. And then the specialty rim, uh, that's, that's another you would probably recommend an assist arm so you're, you're less likely to come down and take in the tire. So we're going to move into alignment terminology. Um, we offer the turn plates that are used on an alignment lift, the rolling air jacks, uh, which go right in between the tracks of the, uh, of the four post. Uh, that enables you to pick the vehicle up in the air off of the tracks uh, for, to do any type of wheel work or uh, any type of uh, tie rod adjustment or what have you when it comes to doing the alignments. Uh, the alignment lifts come standard with what they call slip plates, which are they're a plate on, on ball bearings that allows you to move the, the rear end of the vehicle around when you're making your adjustments. And then we offer open and closed front lifts. We only have well, one of the open front uh, style alignment lift. And all that is, and you can see that in the picture there, is rather than a full cross rail in between the two posts, there's an opening there, and that just allows the technician ease of walking underneath the vehicle uh, and getting at uh, where they need to do the work. Closed front or just that, it's just a cross rail that goes directly across and they have to get up underneath that when they're doing their work. Our alignment machine that we offer, we have uh, technical support with ours. They are a high resolution 3D camera. Uh, it uses the wireless internet. It, do, it is offered in several languages. Uh, what's unique about ours is you see in the picture there, it's got the, the camera boom, uh, which is adjustable. So there's nothing that mounts on the wall uh, like uh, other brands. Uh, this unit here is compatible with almost anybody's alignment lift and requires very little head space in front of the lift uh, when you're utilizing it. Uh, the, that's, that camera boom does go up and down uh, on that mask there. And we do offer uh, upgrades for the software and it's readily available. Uh, the difference with our alignment machine, uh, it's very cost competitive. It's a very good brand. 
Uh, what we do, a lot of the more expensive ones, and I'm sure you, a lot of you are familiar with this. If somebody buys an aligner, they'll have a tech, they'll have a, a sales rep or a tech rep come out and set it up and demo it for them. Um, that's all included in the cost. With ours, you would just call our 800 number. We calibrate these at the warehouse before we ship them out. We ship them directly to your customer or to wherever. And there's explicit instructions uh, that before they even open the crate, they call our technician and they walk them through the setup over the phone. They've done this for numerous years now. It's been very, very successful. That's why we're, we're very cost effective with these. Uh, we, have, we stock all of the warranty parts on them. You could call these gentlemen anytime you want, and they're, they're just very knowledgeable alignment machine technicians. So these are, as we have been talking all along, they're a great source of revenue uh, for all types of repair shops. Uh, if you have a technician who knows how to do alignments, basic knowledge, uh, and has done them before, uh, they can do a lot of business with these machines. What's, what sets ours is different, like I said, is that it is portable, it's adjustable. You, if somebody already has an alignment lift or they, their hunter or something uh, went down and they don't want to spend uh, the big money to buy a replacement, then they can, ours is a, 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 can cross-reference into their lift and they can just purchase the aligner by itself. We do offer the updates for the different vehicles uh, on a yearly basis, and they do it via uh, computer. So no one has to come out to, to upload it. Uh, it is done remotely. Uh, we do offer the uh, technical support, and you could call us. We put you directly in touch with our guys, and they can help uh, with any aspect of questions with this product. So this is uh, our body shop uh, section or segment. Uh, we offer paint booths, different styles of paint booths, a cross flow, a semi down draft, and a, a side down draft. We offer the air makeup heaters, and we also offer the ductwork packages uh, for exhausting out of the building. We have frame machines. The one you see on the left there is a tilt deck style that's offered in 18 foot and 20 foot. It's offered in either a steel deck style, which is in the picture, or a tubular deck style, where the deck is made out of tubular steel rather than steel plate. We offer a scissor style for a smaller shop. All of our frame machines come with pulling towers, uh, and we do offer tool boards, complete tool board kits, to go with these frame racks. So the most popular types of equipment used in auto body shops are, of course, uh, paint booths uh, and the frame straightening machines. With the paint booths, as I said, we have the three different styles, um, and so that's what you really want to talk to your customer about. It's, it's how the air flows through them, uh, and it does come down to size and affordability. If it's just a low volume shop, or, or the guy is a uh, does restorations or a car collector, uh, we can get him into one that's affordable and just big enough for him to use. We offer, we do offer our larger ones that uh, are, do carry a higher price, uh, but they, they do fit the same size as the ones that are used, say, the Makos and the Finish Master type uh, Service King shops. Uh, same with the frame racks. The 18-footer and the 20-footer are all used in professional auto body shops, but if they are doing trucks, we always highly recommend the 20-footer. And also, uh, if they're gonna be doing a lot of volume, then we would recommend the steel plate style. Uh, they both have the same weight capacity and pulling capacity, but the steel plate style is a little bit more uh, weight and a little bit more price and is designed for a high volume shop. These are capital pur purchases and uh, they wanna make sure uh, that they use, if they're gonna get one, they're gonna use it to its fullest and they, they will be sure uh, to make some great profits uh, using this equipment. Um, with the spray machines, uh, spray booths, to go, go back on those, just to tell you the, quickly what the differences are. On the cross flow style, the air comes in through the front doors and goes out the back walls. And these are 
the air is pulled out with an exhaust fan. On the semi-down draft, that is the larger paint booth, the air comes in through a filtered ceiling in the front of the paint booth and then is drawn straight through across from front to back in through another filtered wall and then drawn out by an exhaust fan. The side down draft, which is our most popular, is as close as you can get to a traditional downdraft style paint booth. A downdraft style is the kind of paint booth that has, sits on top of a pit and the air is drawn through the floor from the ceiling uh, or it sits on a pedestal and the air is drawn through the floor. With our side down draft, the air is drawn in through a filtered ceiling, but it, then it goes out the bottom of the left and right hand side walls. So it's almost the same as effect as a down draft but you don't have to have a pit uh, to use that paint booth. The, the difference, big differences with our paint booths, just to, to touch the, on those some more, is the way we sell our paint booths is very different from everybody else. Whenever you, if you're familiar with the paint booth industry, when people are shopping for paint booths or, or quoting paint booths, they're a galvanized steel paint booth, and the customer is has all these additions that they have to make uh, before they can get the final cost on their paint booth. Normally, if you're shopping, say, a coal mat or a, a gar mat or a global finishing type of paint booth, you would pay extra for it to be powder coated white. You would pay extra for the trifold doors and windows. You would pay extra for a deluxe control panel that has interlocks built into it. Um, there's just all these add-ons that the, the paint booth manufacturers have when you're shopping for paint booths. With our paint booth, everything is included in the price, and it's a very competitive price. So they come powder-coated, they come with trifold doors, they come with the filters, the lights, the bulbs, they come, uh, we use the Dayton fans and motors, uh, so it's a really good quality paint booth, and we are selling these uh, all over the United States, and it's just been a great seller for us. It's a big ticket item. Um, and so we if you have any questions on paint booths, uh, we'll be happy to talk to you about them. This last page we have, we have here, and I'm going to cover a couple of items. But so when you're selling paint booths, selling lifts, tire changes, balancers, you know, people will say, well, who's going to put it in for me? We do have a, an installer uh, guide where we can recommend installers. We don't do it but we can give the name and number of someone in your customer's area that will do it and they would just pay them separately. Uh, we feel that's the best way to go. And uh, the people that we do have as recommended installers are very good customers of ours, uh, but and also very good references. They're not the type of installer that would go out and try to take your deal. Um, they, they have been people that we've been dealing with for many years and they're familiar with our product. And uh, also, as far as our products concerned, uh, we do have a one-year parts warranty and a five-year structural warranty on all of our equipment. We do not have a labor warranty uh, because we wouldn't be cost-effective if we did. And the more expensive p uh, brands out there that do have labor warranties, of course, are a higher price. But what we do have is fantastic customer service and technical support here. We have a full service department that you can call in at any time or even have your customer call us anytime. We can handle whatever they throw at us over the telephone. We give very good customer service and very good service uh, on the products. We also stock all the parts. We've got over a million dollars worth of parts uh, in our inventory. And when a customer or your jobber calls in and they need parts or you need to get parts from us, we'll ship it out the same day or the following day at the latest. We're very proud about our parts department and our service department. Uh, do you all have any questions for us? I, I don't see any here. Um, but we will follow up with everyone who is on the webinar. We'll follow up with um, the contact information for the shop equipment specialist with Medco. I'll send you their email and phone number so you can contact them directly um, and, and they can answer any questions you might have. Um, I imagine a lot of people might have questions when it comes time to when they're working with a shop and they might be asking questions about a um, particular piece of an equipment. So um, I don't see any um, anybody typing anything in. So with that, um, 
we're going to conclude the webinar. Thank you, Ron and, Doug, and Doug. I appreciate your time. Thank you, everybody. And uh, continue to uh, give us your suggestions on future webinars, and we'll be in touch with the upcoming training opportunities. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you guys for your time.